How can we teach our children to think outside of the box? Many of us have been conditioned to think inside of the box for our entire lives. So let's talk about how to foster creativity and not just in the arts. Hello and welcome back. My name is Natalie Burns. If you are new here on this channel, I show homeschooling moms how to simplify education so they can be free from overwhelm and teach with easygoing confidence. If this sounds like something that you are interested in, then please take a moment and hit that subscribe button. Today, we are talking about fostering creativity. Have you ever found yourself saying, I'm not creative? I mean, I've said it. I actually really thought I wasn't creative. I mean, I didn't have the greatest track record. When I would draw things, people would say, oh, it's a donkey. No, it's a fish. If I wrote a song and sang it, I was told, don't quit your day job. And when I was painting, it was typically with a paint by number kit. Really though, not being creative was a lie that I believed. Creativity is not limited to the arts, but not recognizing this or thinking that my skills were subpar, I now realize was a bit of an emotional shutdown. When trying to process some of those harder things in life, one of the first things to take a nosedive is creativity. So how can we as homeschooling moms keep that creativity alive in our children? Is there something we can say or not say that can help increase that sense of wonder, excitement, and imagination? Thankfully, the story of shutdown of creativity is not where my story ends. I mean, it hasn't even been a year since I started this business, and it has been such a wonderful creative outlet for me to express my unique individual ideas. I've been able to reignite a creative side that had been buried by illness and grief. And so what I want for my children is for them to keep their creativity alive no matter what life throws their way. And maybe this is something that you want for your children too. So let's talk about how we can foster creativity in our homeschools. I think first of all, we should really take a moment and define what is creativity. Well, creativity is that unique way of thinking. We're talking original ideas, the ability to come up with something new or think about something different or from a new perspective. When we look at the Bloom's Taxonomy Pyramid, let's pull it up here. Okay, hopefully you can see that really well here. You will see that on this Bloom's Taxonomy Pyramid, creativity is right there at the top. This is the highest level of thinking that our brains are capable of. Have you ever thought about how little children are so uninhibited when it comes to getting creative with like Lego or paints? And then as we watch our children get older through the years, or if you think back for yourself, you will see that that creativity starts to lessen more and more, especially if your child has spent significant time in the traditional school system. As your child gets older, maybe moving from knowing to applying to creative thinking actually becomes a bit more of an ordeal. As I've been unpacking this concept, I've really been thinking about how creativity is in all of us, and it's always there. It just starts to get blocked off as time goes on, blocked by harmful things we've been told, harmful things we've experienced, even harmful perspectives or incorrect perspectives that we've held and turned into belief systems. Knowing this allows us to approach our children with so much more compassion when it comes to fostering these higher levels of thinking like creativity. We can choose to become more purposeful about using encouraging and uplifting words in our homes. We can explore with our children what it looks like to move through traumatic experiences and we can show them what it means to try 
and fail without being shamed for that experience. When it comes to creativity, I believe that we were made in the image of our creator. So when we express this creative side of ourselves, we're really allowing ourselves to shine forth. So what stops creativity? It's those blockages of those harmful experiences that gave us these messages that were incorrect perspectives about who we really are. Things like believing that we are unworthy or shameful. When we either take the time to prevent those harmful belief systems from taking root or take the time to heal and shift perspective from those belief systems to what is true, then we can see those blockages move away and that creativity of our inner sense of being really start to shine forth. Isn't that what we want for our children? For their originality and the expression of their unique sense of being just shining forth into the world. So how do we actually teach creativity when it comes to our homeschools? Is art the only way to do this? No. Here are my top three tips for helping your child to think outside the box. The first tip that I have for you is to do an audit or reflection and review of what kinds of words your child has heard or that they are hearing right now in their lives. There is so much power in our words and we want to make sure that when we do something like correct our children, that we're correcting their behavior and not speaking to who they are as a person. We want to make sure that we are exercising appropriate and compassionate discipline. So take note about how your child feels about themselves. If you were to ask them to describe themselves, what kind of word choice do they use? When your child feels more safe and secure emotionally, they will be more likely to express themselves creatively. And if your child already has had experiences that hinder their creativity, then providing opportunities for that non-judgmental expression of themselves can be a really positive aspect of their healing process. The second tip that I have for you is to remember that we do not need to have or give all of the answers to our children. It is so good to be reminded over and over again that it is not our role to be the provider of information, to be the answer bearer. Our role is to be a facilitator, a helper, a support person for their learning. It is not our job to do learning for our child or to make learning happen. It is their job to take responsibility for their own learning. Now, this is really important when it comes to creativity, because if we are trying to do learning for our children, then we are effectively telling them what to think. But what we really want is for them to think for themselves, their own original creative ideas. When we are able to take a step back from that ownership of learning, then our children start to engage more with that creative thinking approach to how they go about doing things for themselves. They start to discover what it means to learn how to learn. And this may be really clumsy at first. It may be messy. It may be a little bit uncomfortable for you to witness, but it's really important for your child to go through that stumble of what it means to learn how to learn. Your job is to provide a safe space for them to make these mistakes and to be that encouraging cheerleader as they fall down and pick themselves up again. The third tip I have for you to foster creativity in your homeschool is to set up learning in a way that tends to more than one right answer. I mean, think about a multiple choice question for a moment here. You have A, B, C, D, four options for which is the right answer. And your child just needs to memorize and choose 
what answer to give. Compare that with a short answer response question, an open-ended question that does not have one defined answer and may even have more than one right answer. Your child is then forced to articulate their own original thought and how they want to communicate what they're thinking. You know, when we can move to this role of facilitator, then we really start to see our children take ownership of their own learning process. They start to get to explore what that looks like, and you may be surprised at what comes out with their creative expression. We want to give them the space to come up with those ideas and the opportunity to express those ideas. Are you looking for a little bit more support in how to help your child to express their learning in a way that works for you and for them, well, then you may want to check out the programs that I offer over at my website. I have them all linked in the description box to make your life easier here. I have the free workshop, the masterclass, and the video course, Teach How You Want, where I walk you through how to bring your child up in these different levels of thinking, like with Bloom's taxonomy, so that you can draw out even more creative expression from your child. Well, I will be back with another homeschool teaching video here in a week. So if you are subscribed, then you will catch me with the next one. I hope that you have a wonderful day and I'll see you next time.